again. <laughs> this feels really weird because this is my first in-person collab with anyone as well. Yeah, I know. This is only my second. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I made a bunch of videos with Tiago, but yeah. And also it's... Leanne, this is literally, okay, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, if you don't know, this was like my first internet friend that I made, like the very beginning of COVID. I don't know, internet friends started first really being a thing for me. She was like my first one. You had like around 200 subscribers when I found your oh thing. My God. And I was like, I need to become friends with this girl. She is like so cool. <laughs> it's been really surreal. I've already been here in Nottingham for two, <laughs> for two weeks. I actually leave tomorrow, but we've just been like, you know, hanging out and in enjoying our time together so we haven't collabed yet but yeah we're squeezing this in right now and we have dinner reservations in like an hour yeah so <laughs> it's went by so fast okay so we're a little pressed for time so yeah. let's just get started with our unpopular opinions um since oh yeah we have our drinks Cheers. <laughs> i will let you my guest go first oh my gosh okay my first unpopular opinion is horror doesn't have to be scary and your point is completely invalid if you say a certain horror movie is bad because you didn't find it scary okay true fact that is like something <laughs> i argue with people all the time they'll be like oh my gosh that movie was so shit because like it wasn't scary or like it wasn't even a horror movie because i didn't find it scary like i Sorry. <laughs> horror is completely objective. There are things that people find scary that I don't find scary or vice versa. And horror covers such a broad subject anyway. Like horror doesn't have to be terrifying. It can be subtle and lingering and just make you think about things in the moment. No, I agree. And I think that's the reason why like literally everybody has unpopular horror opinions because it's super, super subjective. And like I was talking about it with Tiago, how intimate horror Horror is more scary to me, you know, yeah. like portrayals of abuse and stuff rather than, you know, like big monsters and stuff like that. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Let's all be polite today. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> These are just opinions. Everyone's allowed to think differently. If we all thought the same, the world would be a very, very boring place. Yes. Yeah. Oh, also, our friend Roger from Slasher Pepper, he's like reacting to and roasting mine and Tiago's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Opinions. I saw that on the chat. Do you know when he's uploading that? It's coming out a couple days so he's probably gonna get it out. I am so excited to watch Yeah that. I'll have to link it down below. He's gonna be roasting our opinions and hopefully I don't regret saying this and hopefully he's like nice you know what I mean but he's our friend so it's all in good fun. Hi I am editing. I have since watched the roast and I have no regrets. It's the first time that I think anybody has reacted to one of my videos. It was an honor to be roasted by Slasher Pepper. He did an amazing job. The video is hilarious. I was cracking up so please please go watch it right now. I mean not right now no no finish this video first finish this video first but then watch that one immediately afterwards i wish seb and i had done that because like when you said that <laughs> thing about the ghost face mask oh my gosh <laughs> I, I know our faces were just yeah. like what the fuck that is very controversial <laughs> the freddy cougar franchise the freddy cougar <laughs> franchise seb oh was mad gosh. about that he's over there actually we put our boyfriends over there yeah <laughs> they're in the boyfriend corner <laughs> okay so my first one for this video insidious 2 is better than insidious 1. Oh the, my gosh, the, what? Okay, no. Okay. So like I've already done my ranking for this, but that was like over a year ago, I think. I did it with my dad actually. <laughs> we oh ranked, yeah. yeah, I think I've seen that video. Yeah, that was like at the beginning. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah. yes, the beginning. So I just really, really like it as a direct sequel. I think it's one of the best direct sequels I've ever seen. And like, I love the first one too, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. I just think it's so hard to make an amazing sequel because you just typically see with a lot of great franchises there's a great first movie and then there's just that gradual decline mm -hmm. and there are a lot of exceptions honestly I mean like Child's Play I would say Terminator you know mm -hmm. and for me Insidious is also one of them I feel like the good thing about the Insidious sequel is that it feels like a very natural continuation of the first mm -hmm. movie whereas like some other sequels feel very forced and it's like it's just a money yeah. grab I mean I don't know if it was supposed to be split into two sequels anyway but like it does feel like that it's the same team of people working on both of them and mm -hmm. also the first movie does end kind of open-ended yeah exactly yeah that's so, why like it makes me feel like that was already planned maybe the first one is really scary for me though like me too every when, time when they go into the further and there's like the family and like with the smiles oh like yeah. when I watched Insidious for the first time I had to take my dad's like little Jack Russell to the toilet <laughs> with me I was so scared those movies were for me every time even though I don't really believe in like ghosts and like demons and I stuff. Do. 
Well, then that's I have some probably I have why, some but... crazy stories. Or maybe <laughs> I've just like repressed my belief so far down because I fear it so much, and that's why the insidious maybe. movies are so scary. Yeah, for me. maybe. My next unpopular horror opinion is jump scares can be as effective as fudge. And I'm looking at you, Haunting of Hill House. I don't know if you've yes. seen it, but oh. do you know the one I'm talking about? I think so because there were like two or three. I feel like in that show, there's that... like this one, but I don't want to say too much. I'll say. It right now but like okay can, yeah, i'll cut it now you okay. can cut it out yeah. um it's the one in the car when they're the one, driving the one, and with the bent neck lady yeah oh yeah my god, yes oh my gosh so i watched that with my ex and like i've never been so affected by a jump scare before especially at that point because i'd been so into horror for a few years like you kind of know when a jump scare is gonna happen mm. like there's telltale signs but that one literally came out of nowhere and oh my gosh it was so scary a lot of people hate on jump scares and like I can understand why because they are kind of a cheap tactic but to say that they don't useless do it, or... yeah useless or whatever like get out there's so many effective jump scares and horror yeah it's only when the movie is relying on them that yeah. it becomes an issue because yeah. it takes so much work to like really craft a really good jump scare because mm -hmm. of course there's the cheap ones like they close the fridge and someone's there you know what I mean <laughs> like that's easy but it takes a lot of effort to craft a really really good one there's that one in the conjuring that I think is infamous now as well as the one in Insidious. Yeah, 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 yeah. The at the table. Yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. The first time I saw that one, yeah, I was shook. Because James Wan, he's one of my favorite directors, he knows how to, you know, set up the atmosphere well enough that he's not relying on jump scares at all. There's like, you know, maybe two or three in his yeah. movies. and I think that's like why he's one of the best modern horror directors. <gasps> All right. Honk. Honk to you too. <laughs> so rude, he interrupted yeah. me. Yeah, I think that's why he's like one of the best modern day horror directors because he really knows how to build an atmosphere and build mm. tension before like letting a release of horror. Mm -hmm. And they're also very unexpected. Like he trains you to think it's coming in one type of way and then it comes in a completely different kind of way like the closet scared, you know? Yeah. Like, oh Another really good jump scare is the one for Jaws. Oh. I'm talking about the one when they go like under the sea and they find the boat oh, wreckage. The, oh. <laughs> I literally talked about that scene in particular with Ken Sledge when we did my first horror movie. Really? I oh, talked about that God. scene. Seb and I rewatched Jaws. Well, it was probably at the beginning of the year now but like, oh my gosh, it still got me. Even though I've seen Jaws loads of times. Okay, oh, um, this kind of goes along with what we're talking about. Horror movies are still good and fun to watch, even if you know what the twist reveal is. And sometimes knowing what the twist is makes the movie better on a rewatch. Yes, yes I completely agree. We watched Shaun of the Dead recently, oh, yeah. even though there isn't like a twist in that. But if you rewatch it, there is so much foreshadowing, yeah. like the dialogue and the script. At the beginning of the movie, there's like a scene in the pub. He's like telling Sean what they're gonna do, but that's literally what happens in the movie. Oh my God. Like it's really subtle. There's also a scene when they're in Sean's mom's house and when like Ed crashes the car, you can hear that really subtly in the background. It's just, it's just like little things. There was a lot of attention to detail in that movie. I'll be talking about it in my like July wrap up, you know, but I really, really liked it. I watched it I'm for so the first time. <laughs> <laughs> with my with my British Scottish pals, it was really great. I was gonna give like another couple examples. Friday the Thirteenth. I'm gonna that movie's like over forty years old, so I'm just gonna go ahead and you know spoil it a little bit. So Pamela Voorhees is the killer, and rewatching that movie just and having it be recontextualized that this older woman mm -hmm. is actually like killing everybody. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, yeah, <laughs> sorry. And then The Sixth Sense, I'm gonna put like timestamps if you wanna skip ahead and avoid spoilers. So there'll be timestamps if you don't wanna hear this. But with The Sixth Sense, once you know that Bruce Willis's character is dead and then you go back and rewatch it and you understand like why his interactions with the kid are like so different and kind of weird, you know? Well, Wait, Seb, have you seen The Sixth Sense? Oh, of course I've seen it. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, oh. oh my God, I'm sorry. I forgot you were there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, another one is Us. Sorry. Oh my gosh, yes. yes. <laughs> Seb and I watched Us, well, I, don't, I went to the cinema to see it, but it was his first time, and re-watching it again, there is just so many things that you're like, you you also watch it from like an entirely different perspective after you know like what happens after your first watch, and it's just like, exactly. oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It, to be honest, it makes it for a much better viewing experience, I think. Yes, yes, okay, yeah. Okay, number three, and I'm probably gonna like, 
get a lot of hate from this one from a particular genre of Ooh. man. Oh. <laughs> is it the streets? Rob Zombie is a one-trick pony, and even though at the start of his career his movies would have been considered somewhat original, even though he did take inspiration from Hells Have Eyes and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and his movies would be considered shocking, he doesn't explore anything out with his comfort zone, and once you've seen one of his movies, you've literally seen all of them. <laughs> I agree heavily, but I think everybody here knows that I hate Rob Zombie because I think everything that he does is so unbelievably cheap yeah. that I just don't have much respect for his direction. Like, I've seen most of his movies now. I've There's a couple I haven't seen yet, but I'm not in, like, any rush to see. I will admit the first time, like, because I watched House of a Thousand Corpses first um, before any of his movies, and I did enjoy it. That's because I think when I watched it, I didn't realize that all his other movies would follow the exact same oh. kind of, like, themes, and it would... It's literally just, like another one of his movies but with like the characters are named differently and stuff yeah because he casts a lot of the same people in all his yeah. movies his wife right yeah but, his wife yeah. his wife's pretty hot though so like oh yeah i oh, mean yeah. if i was married to <laughs> sherry zombie i'd be casting her in my movies yeah. too but yeah literally all of his movies are the same and they're like always like overtly sexual and always have themes of like and stuff like that it's just it's not good and the halloween remakes aren't very good so unless no. you're like drinking and poking fun at it. That's the only time the movies are good. Okay, we agree there. I, <laughs> I feel like there can't be that many Rob Zombie fans in my audience. If you're here, let me know. I'm sorry also. <laughs> I do like his music though. Some of his music really slaps. He did a couple songs for Bride of Chucky. I like his, some yeah, of his music. Yeah, yeah. His, his music in Bride of Chucky was like really good. But yeah. the soundtrack to that is like really grungy 90s. Um, it's just awesome. It's good stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things you can't see are are scarier than things you can see. I have mentioned this a couple of times. Um, an exception to this is gore, but I will say that even with gore or like with body torture and stuff, sometimes if the actor is selling it well enough, you still don't even need to see it. Yeah. So. I agree. No, I agree. This is like one of the issues with I have with the sequel Blair to the Blair Witch, but Blair oh, yeah, Witch, yeah, yeah. not Book of Shadows, is because it just feels like the reveal too much of it and I thought even though well, I can't really talk too much because I'll be talking about this in one yeah. of my opinions oh, okay, um, okay. but like even stuff like gore there's times when I'll be watching a movie the camera will be like leading up to it and then it will like shoot something else but you'll hear like mm -hmm. the background noise of what's going on that makes me cringe a lot more though I'm I think I'm pretty good at handling my gore <laughs> I'm still not really and also like you said though if it's off screen sound design is like yeah. is like everything if you yeah. hear like like a squelch of mm -hmm. like an eyeball popping or, or like a crack of like a bone you know yeah it's, it's so much worse I mean it's not worse. Is it worse? I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of gore, but it's just as effective to me off screen, if not more so sometimes, because whatever you can imagine is worse than whatever they could show you, you know? I agree. Okay, right, you're probably going to hate me for this. No. <laughs> but I had to add it. The Ring isn't a good remake to Ringu. <laughs> Please, please, <laughs> what? Okay, okay, okay. This is something I want to talk about in my channel, but like a lot of my like real life friends know that I'm not a huge fan of foreign film remakes. The Ring is considered like one of the greatest remakes of all time, and I would like completely disagree. Maybe it's because like as I was growing up, I was really into like Japanese culture anyway, like I was really into anime, and then that grew into Asian cinema. And when I was like in my teens, I watched a lot of Asian horror movies one of which being the entire Ringu franchise mm. so I saw that first way before I saw the remake of the ring and like I'd always heard like oh the ring is one of the scariest movies of all time and I think it maybe just got too hyped up for me that I got really let yeah. down there's like elements added to the story which don't make sense to me like the whole like horses thing side oh, you're story not a fan. I'm not a fan of that <laughs> like I don't understand what that like added to the original <laughs> story or like whatever I don't think it improved anything and I don't don't think Samara's look is very scary. I think like the last shot looks kind of cheap. Oh, okay, that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. thought you meant like when she's a little girl. No, I was like, no, oh. no, 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 no. Like yeah. the very last shot with her. Like I think in the Japanese version they do that way more scarier. But I know a lot of people love it and like that's fair. But it's just like not my cup of tea. I would say there.
there there uh, might be a bias given how much you love Japanese culture. Just <laughs> maybe. 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 <laughs> but see how opinions are not that deep because this is one of my best friends in the whole world. And The Ring is like my favorite horror movie of all time. And yeah. she's like, I don't really like it. But we're still friends. I'm sure there's like lots of movies that I really like that you're like not a fan of. Like yeah. I know one for sure, which is The Exorcist. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're always talking shit about that movie all the time on your channel. And I'm just like, yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, and she's just cheering me on anyways. Yeah, I'm like, you go girl, make your content. <laughs> that's fair though. That's that's valid. Especially like if you loved the Ringu franchise first. Yeah. Like it's you're totally valid. Oh, this oh <laughs> this is okay, so now it's my turn to make you mad. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. The original Evil Dead, actually and also the remake, but mostly the original is a very annoying movie to me. <laughs> I don't really like it. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me just, let me just, okay. Let's I can explain. understand the remake. I'm not a huge fan of the remake, so oh, like. I, th I thought I was alone. Everybody said the remake was oh, so good. I know. The only part I like about the remake is the raining blood scene. Yeah. I think that's done really well. But apart from that, I'm not a fan. Like I much prefer the original trilogy. I haven't seen the whole trilogy, but mm -hmm. I, I think I definitely prefer the original. Yeah. It's, I don't hate the Evil Dead. Um, It like definitely has entertainment value but a lot of it just really annoys me because a lot of the time I'm like what like what is what is going on like this is so dumb <laughs> it just gets even more stupider by the way like <laughs> which I love campy stuff but I think it just doesn't really cater to my sense of humor because specifically what I wanted to talk about is the one girl I think it's the first girl that gets possessed or maybe it's Ash's girlfriend or something but she just laughs like non-stop oh yeah that's Ash's girlfriend <laughs> and she, she's just like laughing like eee! <laughs> I can understand why people would find it annoying. Yeah. You might prefer the Evil Dead 2 and maybe even Army of Darkness because they kind of, they don't like completely ditch the horror concept, but they do really more lean into the kind of campy fun of it. And like, it doesn't, like Evil Dead is supposed to be like a serious movie, but Evil Dead 2 doesn't take itself seriously. It's more of a parody of the first oh, one. There's okay. like this huge argument about whether Evil Dead 2 is a remake, is it a sequel? Is it like a combination of both? So you might prefer Evil Dead 2. Isn't Bruce Campbell also in Evil Dead 2 though? Yeah, he's and in he's in like all of them, apart from the remake. But oh my gosh, I just love Ash Williams. He is yeah, a oh, gorgeous man. <laughs> I don't hate the Evil Dead. There's just a lot about it that I'm like, what? Like somebody wrote this? Okay, anyways. Hating on sequels isn't a personality trait and a lot of sequels surpass the original movie, especially in horror. <laughs> there are so many horror franchises where the sequel is better than the original. It's it's funny because we were just talking about this and I was like, you yeah, know, like usually I, the original movie is the best one and it's hard to, but there's actually a lot of really good sequels. There is a lot of really good sequels like Dream Warriors. There's a lot of Friday the 13th sequels that are better than the original. Of course. Like, like Child's Play. Mm -hmm. I could make a video on this actually. Yeah. Arguably Scream for some people. Yeah, because um, honestly Scream 4 is like, like Scream is here, but like Scream 4 is like literally like... I yeah literally like there. <laughs> I rated Scream Four right under Scream One. I haven't I watched your me. Scream ranking, oh, my ranking? yet because oh, yeah. Seb and I are watching the series, so I don't want to right. finish watching all your Scream videos until I've finished watching the series. Because mm -hmm. spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've watched all of American Horror Story, right? Yeah. Okay, I've been in a couple like American Horror Story groups, and a lot of people hate on this season. I love season four of American Horror Story Freak, Freak Show. Show. I love Freak Show. Oh my. <laughs> Gosh, you know, I completely agree. I think it's a great season. Oh my gosh, I, I don't like the ending really, but like, yeah, I, I, but. The fact that, you know, disabled people and what freaks, whatever, they're the main characters and the protagonists and the people you root for, like, yeah. that's not something we really usually get to see. Also, there are some fantastic performances in that season. Like, mm -hmm. Sarah Paulson literally had to, like, act as two different characters with two completely different personalities, yeah. like, shot after shot. I know he's really annoying, but I love Dandy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. He's such, like, a whiny, white, rich boy, like, mama's boy, but, like, I don't know, there's something about um, I don't it's, know if it's like the psychoticness, but like. <laughs> well, it's the performance. Yeah. Finn Wittrock is just, oh my gosh. They've really underused him since in American Horror Story. I know. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He deserves so much more. He puts on 
a shit. He puts on a performance. He was amazing in Ratchet. Oh yes, oh, so good. I liked. I really liked. I Ratched. loved Ratchet. I really want to rewatch it. So. Is that unpopular? Because so many people people just love to like hate on Ryan Murphy. I think. I, I think a lot of people quite liked Ratchet. Or I like, really liked. It. I really liked it. I don't know. I think people on Twitter are just like mean for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> they're know. just bored. <laughs> it's my turn. Okay, you're also probably gonna like hate me on this, but apart from the soundtrack and the cinematography, I didn't think It Follows was very good i um, found it really boring that's fair it's a slow burn that's fair i'm I, i'll hear you out on that one no but like i love slow burn movies like i would say midsummer is also kind of a slow burn there's like a few movies that have been really successful and a lot of people like and i really really want to like them but i've just never been able to click i really understand why a lot of people like it like it's got a fantastic soundtrack cinematography is so beautiful like the opening scene when she's on the beach like I've talked about this on my channel on like the would we survive these horror movies oh, yeah. I, I don't know I, I feel like some of the decisions like the characters make like her freaking out about like oh what should she do should she sleep with someone but like if she doesn't sleep with someone she's gonna die yeah. like <laughs> girl there's like <laughs> Use your brain. <laughs> you either die or you just have sex with someone and pass it on to them. I can't really speak to it too much because it's actually been probably like a couple years since I've rewatched it. Yeah. So I can't even fully like rebuke that or anything. So, you know, it's that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I have no idea how you're going to feel about this. But yeah, okay. So you've seen all the seasons of American Horror Story, etc. or whatever. But even in movies as well, Tasia Farmiga is not a good protagonist. I kind of agree. I think that's because, like, I've just not really seen her really do much acting apart from, like, what she's known for. Like, she seems very, like, comfortable in certain types of roles, which there's nothing wrong with. But, like, because I haven't seen her, like, expand, like, doing different roles and different characters, it does seem like every character she plays is the same. Literally every single character. So the nun, um, the final girls, every role she has in American Horror, story it's oh she's the plain but pretty moral compass the yeah. boring which girl. was good to start off with because i do really like violet in house. murder house yeah. yeah and i thought her storyline but I, is was fantastic but i think that's because murder house is such a good season anyway i loved her in coven but that's because i'm obsessed with anything to oh, do I'm... with witches and mm -hmm. magic like mm -hmm. i am all mm -hmm. over that but outside of that like i can totally see where you're coming from yeah, yeah it's just that you know i i like my actors to have some range I guess yeah, I don't know yeah. I just get really really bored of her sorry no she's she's talented she is a talented is, person yeah yeah um but yeah I'm just I'm sorry girl like maybe try we just, something else we want to see more we want to see you branch out and do like yeah. your absolute best you know yeah okay <laughs> this is another one I wanted to talk about okay. but the Blair Witch Project is boring <laughs> I wouldn't even call that like unpopular because I think it's kind of like a 50 50 split I don't know like maybe it's just because I know a lot of people like whoever I've talked to on this have always really rated The Blair Witch Project. I just want to say I don't hate on this movie. I've seen this movie so many times because I really want to like it. So I've watched this movie in different occasions thinking like, oh, if I watch it this time, maybe I'll understand the hype, which I guess I can kind of do understand the hype because I guess it's kind of similar to like The Exorcist and the way that like it was so culturally like impactful. Like it was the first movie to, well, horror movie to really use like the internet as advertising and it did the whole like oh it was a real life story mm -hmm. and they like had released a documentary before the release of movie and there was a website and the missing posters and all that jazz so I completely understand like why for its time it was like an amazing thing I find that the like actors in it really annoying especially Heather like oh really the main girl <laughs> yeah oh, no. she just doesn't stop screaming and I just want to like slap her and be like <laughs> keep it together girl and like the guy who like froze the meth in the river I'm just like oh my oh. gosh though I do think like the nighttime scenes when they're in the tense and like especially because when we watched it recently it was like surround sound and sometimes you couldn't quite tell if it was like you were hearing what was coming from the speakers or like was it coming from outside the window and then it just ends like that as well which like I don't know I say similar things about The Exorcist like I get it for the time that it came yeah. out in 
what, 73 or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I get that exorcism movies weren't really a thing, so it was shocking, whatever, mm-hmm. but... Back then as well, like, religion was a lot more, like, especially, like, Catholicism and Christianity mm-hmm. was a lot more, like, culturally impactful, whereas nowadays people are more branching away from that. Another side note to that is, like, I think The Blair Witch Project 2, Book of Shadows, is a better movie. <laughs> I... Uh, I could not even finish that (laughs) sequel because of how much I hated the characters. I could not stand it. The characters are kind of annoying, but I don't know. It's got like such an early 2000s, late 90s grungy feeling about it. I feel like at least things happened in that movie to like keep me hooked. That's one thing that I don't really understand when people talk about the Blair Witch Project because things happen. Like really horrifying, gross stuff does happen, but everybody's like, nothing happens in that movie. But like it, but it does. Like the teeth. The very first time I watched the Blair Witch Project. I was pretty young. I think I was like 11 or 12 and I was at a sleepover at a friend's house and this was way before I got into horror and she was like, oh, we need to watch this movie. It's like based on a real story. We didn't even finish it because like we had to turn it off because it was like a bunch of 11, 12 year olds oh, yeah. screaming, freaking out. <laughs> when I was a lot older and I watched it, like I finished it and I was just like, oh, what? What, what was that about? Okay, okay, my turn. Okay, this one I... <laughs> included because I know you're not gonna like it. That's why I included the ring one. I was like, oh, yeah. Kylie's not gonna like this one. <laughs> yep, so that's that's this one as well. I find the original Black Christmas to be very boring. I love the original Black Christmas. It's one of my favorite slashers of all time. No. Seb also didn't wasn't like a huge fan of yeah. it though. So like I can understand it's quite slow. I think the reason why I like it is because it touches on some taboo subjects that like the topics of abortion come up. I just think that's quite refreshing to see in a movie that old. Mm-hmm. And they've tried to remake it twice, but they've not captured like the essence of what I think the original Blair Witch Project. Blair Witch Project? (laughs) Oh my gosh. The original Black Christmas. Because I feel like if they were to remake it, they should do it something quite similar to like Sleepaway. At Sleepaway? Oh my gosh. I'm getting all my movies mixed up. (laughs) Slumber Party Massacre. They should touch on like the feminist undertones of what the original movie had. I haven't watched the remakes, so I can't speak to that. I haven't seen the new one, but I've heard it's awful. And I watched the trailer and it just, I don't know. I think the trailer also spoiled like one of the biggest yeah. reveals so yeah. so now I'm just like what's the point because now I'm gonna know what it is and I'm mm-hmm. just gonna be mad the whole time that I watch it I normally like react for trailers on my channel but I haven't watched the new Halloween Kills trailer because I've heard that there's a lot of spoilers in that and I'm like why do you need to put spoilers in a Halloween trailer people are gonna go see it anyway it's got such mm-hmm. a huge established fan base you know like you don't need to put spoilers just put like a zoom in of Michael Myers and loads of people will come yeah and people will freak out and they'll be like did you notice the new tear on the, the <laughs> left side of his mask under the ear and that builds more hype because then people are more curious and there's more left of the imagination so people talk about it so look at us look at us Mm -hmm. marketing geniuses yeah (laughs) okay your turn uh sleepaway camp is an awful movie and extremely transphobic yes i see a lot of people still really praising that movie the first time i watched it was a few years ago and i feel like i I did kind of like it but i feel like now i'm a lot more educated on things life if the ending wasn't in it it wouldn't be like so bad but i don't understand why like they added that the ending scene because it didn't literally it didn't change anything apart from like well done you've just made this movie extremely transphobic you've just villainized trans people I'm refusing to watch that movie apparently the sequels are better and they don't really touch on that anymore but I haven't seen any of the sequels so I don't know yeah I don't think I'll ever rewatch it because I actually was really enjoying the movie like I liked the entire yeah. movie up until that point because yeah. a lot of people actually complain about that movie that a lot of the deaths are kind of off screen but I kind of love the reveals of a lot of the bodies because they're really clever Mm -hmm. like the one with the bees and stuff like yeah oh my gosh I love that one yeah I was really enjoying the movie and then the ending just like my jaw dropped I was so it was so abhorrent like it was I was disgusted I was disgusted it's literally only in there for shock value (laughs) is it not shocking enough that the person that was the killer was that not shocking enough like why did they have to throw in yeah why did they have to do that like Oh my gosh. Why they, anyways. I just realized you finished your drink already. I did. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I prefer practical effects to CGI, but, but, 
I can always tell when they are practical and so it never scares me. I appreciate the artistry of it, but it just, they don't do it for me in terms of like scares. Is that because you like have a background in film though? Possibly, I don't know. Well, no, I think it's honestly because, I, so like born in 99, you know, grew up watching movies when CGI had just become really popular. So my young brain watching a lot of movies couldn't pick up on CGI and like, you know, didn't know what was CGI and what wasn't. Now I obviously like can tell, but I didn't grow up with practical effects really because you know I started watching horror in the early 2010s and whatnot and mm -hmm. so that's you know CGI was really taken over at that point yeah. it's funny because a lot of people are like oh my gosh CGI looks so bad it's so obvious whatever and I'm like that's how I feel about practical effects I think it really depends like cheap practical effects will look cheap but like there are some practical effects that look amazing like in Jurassic mm -hmm. Park like those oh. dinosaurs oh my gosh it still holds up today yes. I feel like the same goes for like CGI though I much prefer practical effects Thanks because I do think they look a bit more realistic. Yeah, yeah. And I think when like, when it is cheap CGI... It's, it's infinitely worse than bad practical effects, yeah. I, I will say. I would rather have bad practical effects than bad CGI. Yeah. Because yeah. at least as well, like, I feel like they've tried to make an effort to make it look yeah. realish, I and guess. It's, well, yeah, because it is literally real. Like, yeah. at least it's real. Yeah. yeah. I, I did say I do prefer practical effects, right? Yeah, I said, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. I can kind of see your point. Halloween 2018 is an okay movie, but Jamie Lee Curtis carries it all. Oh, p oh, please. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I didn't know if that was an unpopular opinion or not, because I see a lot of people, like, absolutely love this movie. And it's, a like, in Halloween standards, it's a really good movie. But, like, in horror standards, it's, like, it's okay. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis is, like, amazing mm -hmm. in that movie. Like, I think that's when Laurie really came to be, really. Especially in Halloween, the first one, she is kind of just, like, your standard final girl. But that's because she kind of, like, set the final girl role like yeah. popularized it so it was really nice to see her come back and kind of like become what we would hope Laurie Strode it like would be if that makes yeah. sense they, they Sarah Connored her I agree with that one yeah. okay. Okay, okay okay that's good I don't know if this is unpopular but I feel like this is such a niche subgenre that I just love so so much and I don't really know if a lot of people other people do but we need adult themed stop motion animation horror movies. Oh my gosh. I, I have never thought about that before, but yes, I would love that. Because Coraline does it for me. Coraline does it for me, as well as Corpse Bride. And Corpse Bride isn't really Corpse scary. Bride is so good. But like, I understand the time and the money and the energy that goes into stop motion animation. I understand. I watched the behind the scenes of Coraline. Okay, I know how hard it is, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. And we need we need adult themed horror animation period. Animation yeah. is not just for kids. It's not just for kids. We need horror animation. I know you keep trying to get me to watch Castlevania, but like- <laughs> Castlevania is so I good. Just, I, just, I don't know, anime, like it doesn't really like, I don't know. It doesn't really. It doesn't really do it for me. There's some really disturbing scenes in Castlevania. There is some really shocking images. I think it's one of the best animated horror I've mm. ever seen. Remakes can be better than the original movie. For example, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate on this, but I think the remake of Suspiria is way better than the original. Oh, I haven't seen the remake yet, but I want to. I know I'm gonna like it more than the original. I don't want to talk about it like too much in like terms of like what happens, but the original. Don't get me wrong is a classic it is so beautifully filmed with the different light lighting mm -hmm. and the inspirations it took from Snow White. The remake adapts the storyline more and there's more depth to the movie. The original is like, this is a good movie, but it's also just kind of like a pretty movie. And there's yeah. also really like some scenes that are just a bit like, why has that just happened? The original doesn't have like a lot of depth, I would imagine. Yeah, the remake, the remake really goes into it. And also like it took a huge aspect of the first one, which is the dancing. I've said this to you before, but they really adapt on that in the remake. And it works so well. Dance and horror is really good. Exhibit B, Black Swan. Yes! Oh, oh my gosh, God. I love Black Swan. Okay, so are we on the last one now? Is it yeah. my turn? Okay, yeah. all right. Sorry, last one. I'm finishing it out. I try to finish with a positive one. Have you seen The Boy? Yes. The Boy is good. I... <laughs> 
I like, like it. Because most people complain, oh, it's not scary. It's predictable. Like, you know, it's coming, whatever. But like you said, a horror movie doesn't need to be scary <laughs> to be good. I really, because I really, really like the story and I love the location. And I also really love the look of the doll. I, I think he's creepy. The doll looks good. What's his name? Brahm? Brahms. Yeah, Brahms. Brahms. The thing is with me, though, the reason why I don't think I enjoyed it so much, and it has been like years. I think I watched it when it first came out. Mm. I watched kind of a somewhat similar, not really a similar movie in terms of plot but the twist was like oh. somewhat the exact same oh. of In the Boy. So I'd watched that and then like a few months later I'd watched The Boy and I was like, oh, I don't uh. know, I felt really <laughs> underwhelmed. I haven't yeah. seen the sequel so I don't know if that's like... Okay, fair enough. Oh god, the sequel is the worst, one of the worst, <laughs> one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. I can't, <laughs> it's literally not even worth your time. Like, it might be funny like entertainment value so bad it's good but it's really, I just don't think just, just don't waste your life. Don't waste your life away watching the sequel to the book okay. I guess we're gonna wrap it up here we um, are. hopefully we didn't make you too mad but if we did <laughs> let us know in the comment section also Leanne's channel the official scream queen will be linked down below as well as her Instagram oh you're good sorry I keep <laughs> knocking the chair as well as their twitch channel they stream reactions we stream twice a week we've not been streaming this week just because like we've been so busy with you being in the UK and then like we've been like so exhausted oh my gosh yeah, yeah it, fair enough so Sorry, I'm um, sorry. But yeah, we stream on Mondays and Thursdays. Yes. Mondays and Thursdays. <laughs> we're doing the Leprechaun franchise at the moment. Oh, nice. I think the next one we're supposed to be streaming is um, In The Hood. But all their information, their Instagram accounts, everything, Twitch, YouTube, that'll all be linked down below, as well as all of my social media, my Patreon, my vlog channel, where we've documented, we've actually been filming more together because we went to a lake. We went out to Sherwood Forest, the Robin Hood Forest and everything. So that's all gonna be documented and I'll get that up hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, everything you need is linked down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope I catch you in the next Next one. Bye. Bye. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm so sweaty. Me too. Oh my gosh.